First, thank you so much for doing this interview. It is such an honor to have a chance to speak with you. I have to ask you, before we talk about Canada's Walk of Fame, how does it feel about the legacy that your family has been able to achieve, has left, has presented as it goes on into the future? How does it feel knowing that that legacy has helped so many people, not just in the U.S., not just in Canada, but around the world? Sometimes that's overwhelming, quite frankly. Um, I'll give one example. My mother used to tell me that there are streets and schools and hospitals and all kind of things named after your father. I was in Bosnia maybe about seven years ago. And the second largest city, Tuzla, in Bosnia, City Hall is on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Now I'm saying that to say that there's no black folk at all in Bosnia, maybe military people from time to time. But Eastern Europeans felt that there was something in the message of Martin Luther King Jr. that could, they could apply to their plight. And of course, again, this happens all over the world. So it, it, it certainly is amazing. Now what I uh, also feel is though we've, we as a world have made great strides, but obviously there's a whole lot of work still left to be done. And I'm very excited about what I see happening among young people in the U.S. like Black Lives Matter, things that they do. Colin Kaepernick is an incredible hero uh, to me personally. Uh, and it's very sad that people don't understand the respect that he's still showing to the flag because he could, you know, just be sitting down, but you're taking a knee. A knee is generally something of honor. You're taking a place, you, when, when people get hurt, everybody goes down to a knee. So how is it now that when it relates to the United States flag, when you take a knee, you're being disrespectful when you've already stated no, I'm focusing on the fact that African-American men are being killed like dogs every day, and I want to acknowledge that so that somebody, so that change will occur. Absolutely, absolutely. I have to ask you now about Canada's Walk of Fame. How does it feel being part of this, a presenter, and uh, of course something that's really important, again, it's part of Canadian history we're talking about. You know, this is incredibly important, and I am really, really um, humbled and honored to have been invited by Jeffrey Latimer. Uh, when I uh, began talking and he shared with me about uh, Viola Desmond. In fact, I was slated to be somewhere else. But once he told me what was happening, the walk of, what the Walk of Fame is doing, and the fact that she's going to be on the $10 bill, and the fact that she protested in 1946, nine years before Rosa Parks, uh, I was like, oh, there are, many, there are parallels here. There, there, you, you know, there, there, there are parallels for, for people who stand up for injustice. Um, you know, because some people would say, well, Miss Parks, for example, there are some who would say, well, she just happened to be sitting down on that day. No, it was a, 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 a definite decision that was made um, that dramatically changed her life, but more importantly, opened doors for masses of people. Uh, because in Montgomery, 381 days, black folk didn't ride buses. That was huge. Um, here in Canada, I think one of the things that's going to happen is because Ms. Desmond will be on the $10 bill, young children will be able to aspire to say, you know, I want to know more about what, who this person was and what her, she did in terms of the history of our, our nation. And it's just phenomenal that she's the first woman who happens to be black. It is. It definitely is. I know you have more interviews to do, so I want us to say again, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for being part of this. But again, thank you for what your family has done for so many people. Thank you for the opportunity. Bless you.